I modded a whole new structure of the labyrinth into Minecraft, which adds in new items, blocks, mobs, and finally, a boss that you have to defeat at the end of the structure. The mod is called Dungeon Air Loading 1% and it is available as Forge or Fabric mod. The first entry to this mod is the Labyrinth, which generates underground and as the name implies, it has a maze-like generation that makes the player lost in the structure. To find the Labyrinth, first you will have to find a dungeon. There, you can find a map that leads to the location where the dungeon is buried. This creates a small progression path, adding much more value to the dungeon. Now that you're in the Labyrinth, the first mob that you might encounter is a Spawner Carrier. When aggravated, the Spawner Carrier will start emitting a flame particle, preparing to spawn a group of mobs to fight off the intruder. The Spawner Carrier can spawn up to 3 mobs every 15 seconds and it can carry one of the 5 spawner types. Zombie, Skeleton, Spider, Creeper, or Cave Spider. When killed, it has a chance of dropping a spawner frame, which is an essential material required to craft the new items in the labyrinth. Or you can lure it to your home and make a mob farm, if you're that desperate for the XPs. Although rarer than a spawner carrier, another mob that the player can get spooked over is the holo. This small flying ghost can phase through walls just like Vex, and it has a semi-transparent body that makes it easy to lose track of the mob. The holo does not have a physical body, meaning that the mob is immune to all attacks that involve physical contact. The only way to kill this mob is through magic, which includes potions and tipped arrows. The labyrinth provides plenty of items that can help players combat hollows, so it should be killable even with no preparation. When killed, it has a chance of dropping a soul cloth. Alongside the new mobs, there will also be many skeletons and zombies that will have equipped armors and enchanted weapons. If you want to know what kind of enchantments they have on their weapon, you can distinguish their roles by looking at their armor trims and colors. When they are defeated, they won't drop their armor or weapon, but instead they will drop one material related to their armor. The mobs are the only threats that can kill you in the labyrinth. Many of the blocks that generate in the labyrinth have dangerous properties that can either help the player or kill them. The spikes are present in most of the rooms in labyrinth, and falling on them is deadly. Touching the spikes will slow the player down and deal 4 damage per tick without the armor. The pickaxe is the main tool for breaking the spikes, but if you fall and don't have good armor, it can kill you very quickly before you can destroy the block. The spikes won't delete your items like cactus, so while it has the same damage capability as lava, it is less punishing. When this destroyed, it won't drop the block and there is no way of crafting the spikes since I thought it was a bit too overpowered if the players could place them wherever they want. The explosive barrel is basically a TNT that does not destroy blocks. It has no fuse delay and explodes immediately after it gets lit or receives redstone signal. It is affected by gravity just like sand and explodes on impact, even if there's a slab block below it. If you don't like the fact that the explosive barrel has no destruction, you can enable that in the mod config. The barrel can be destroyed instantly and drops gunpowder. Similar to spikes, there is no way to craft them. Another instance where a flame bow comes in handy is when you shoot the dungeon wall torch. The flame arrow will light up the dungeon wall torch, making it easier for the player to light up places that can't be reached easily. The platforms are used to create shelves and bridges in the labyrinth. One of the ends of the platform must be connected to a wall, or else they will break instantly. This property can be used to lure and drop multiple mobs at once, if you can time it right. Let's talk about the new items that can be found in the labyrinth. When you break a spawner, it will draw 4 to 6 spawner fragments. By using 4 of them, the player can craft the spawner frame, which is the same material that is dropped by the spawner carrier. Then you can use 3 spawner frames and 2 amethysts to craft a spawner blade. Now you can craft something that's not crafting material. By using 2 spawner blades, you'll be able to craft a spawner sword. This sword has the same attack damage and speed as a diamond sword, but every time the player attacks, it can do 3 additional damage by draining half a heart from the player. The sword won't kill you when you only have 1 HP, but it also won't apply to bonus damage. Back to the crafting materials. The soul cloth is dropped by hollow, and if you have 5 of them, it can be crafted with 4 strings to craft the soul silk. With soul silk, players can craft even more useful items such as life stealer. This is a weapon that acts as a counterpart to the spawner sword. It can be crafted using 3 spawner blades and a soul silk. The life stealer has the same attack damage as a diamond sword, but slower attack speed. Instead of taking away the player's health, it will heal the player by 20% of the dealt damage. If you have both Life Stealer and Spawner Sword, you can deal a high amount of damage while healing yourself. The spawner Armor is a new armor set that can be crafted using a spawner frame as armor material, except for the helmet, which also requires one so silk. Once you have all pieces of spawner armor equipped, you'll get a full set ability called Whimper's Aid. While there is at least one hostile mob within the 5 block radius, every 10 seconds, the armor will summon a new mob called Whimper. 
The floating doggle is a pet that assists you in battle. Its purpose is to redirect the enemy's targets to themselves and is stolen in the air until the player gets rid of the other enemies. They are capable of killing enemies but only when they feel like it. They will despawn after 30 seconds which means you can only have 3 whimpers spawn at once. The last item that can be crafted using the spawner material is a skull of chaos. This item is an important progression item which requires 5 spawner frames, 1 spawner blade and 1 chain. In order to explain more about this item, I would have to first introduce you to the boss of the labyrinth, the Chaos Spawner. The Chaos Spawner is a sealed skull that is contained in a large glowing box waiting for a curious adventurer to break the seal. To do this, the player will have to use the skull of chaos in front of the boss, which will make a screeching noise awakening the Chaos Spawner. After the Chaos Spawner releases a terrifying roar, it will turn towards the player and begin its rampage. While the Chaos Spawner has a simple goal of killing you by throwing numerous stacks, you might realize that there's no way for you to attack back. The boss is protected by unbreakable barriers that prevent all melee and ranged attacks from passing through. The only way for you to create an opening to attack is by destroying the barrier. To do this, you will have to break all of the 8 diamond notches on the frame, which will instantly fracture the barrier, giving you an opportunity to attack the chaos spawner. The barrier will start regenerating after 5 seconds and after that, it will restore 1 diamond notches per second fully restoring the barrier once all the empty notches are filled with diamonds. This will give the player a total of 13 seconds to attack the Chaos Spawner. While the player has to work around these rules to fight back, the boss can easily attack and kill you with its 3 abilities. The most common ability that the boss uses is the Ghost Bullet. These bullets are shot from the Chaos Spawner when it opens its mouth and has several bullet patterns. The patterns are single, arc, and burst shots. The bullets are blockable though it will disable your shield for a few seconds. This means that you can only block a single bullet per attack pattern since every attack pattern consists of at least 3 waves of bullets. The ghost bullets can go through walls so hiding behind blocks is actually more dangerous since you can't see the bullets flying towards you. Each ghost bullet deals 10 damage so 2 bullets are enough to kill you if you're naked. Since the labyrinth is themed around spawners, I had to include at least one move that summons mobs. For a second ability summoning, the chaos spawner spawns 4 mobs on each side of the barrier. The mobs can be zombies, skeletons, or spiders. Depending on the number of players fighting the boss, it can summon more. Let's say you needle through the flying ghost bullets, kill the bombs, and close the distance between you and the boss. You quickly switch from your sword to pickaxe and aim to break the diamond notch, but the boss has one last trick under its sleeve. When the player is in reaching distance to the barrier, the boss has a chance of using a ground smash, which creates a shockwave that knocks away all players and mobs within the range. Any mobs that get caught in this shockwave will get a whopping 18 damage. The move itself is devastating but the battlefield is designed in a way where the knocked players and mobs can easily fall to their demise. The ground smash can be blocked but you will still take 9 damage, also disabling your shield. The attack has a wide range of 8 blocks so if you see the boss preparing for the ground smash, you should run immediately. Now, if you manage to reduce the chaos spawner's HP to 50% or lower, it will transition to phase 2, modifying some of the abilities from phase 1. The ghost bullet will have upgraded attack patterns, the single shot becomes rapid, arc becomes strong arc, and burst becomes strong burst. All of the attack patterns have more bullets and tighter space to dodge demanding even more precise movement from the player. The summoning will also have increased variations of mobs to summon. On top of the mobs from phase 1, it can also summon half diamond armor zombies and skeletons, invisible spiders, spider jockeys, and full diamond armor baby zombie with diamond axe. Ground smash is pretty strong as it is, so I didn't change anything about it. After you overcome your extreme odds and fought through phase 1, phase 2 and dealt the finishing strike to the boss. The Chaos Spawner will make a suffering cry and drop to the ground. The Chaos Spawner drops 8 to 16 diamonds, 5 great experience bottles, 8 to 16 spawner fragments, 50% chance to drop 4 to 8 spawner frames, 25% chance to drop 2 to 4 spawner plates, and lastly, 1 chaotic hexahedron. Out of all the drops, the great experience bottle and chaotic hexahedron are the new items that we haven't talked about yet. If you haven't noticed, the boss does not drop experience. The reason for this is because it drops the great experience bottle which contains 100 XP per bottle. A single great experience bottle will instantly get you to level 7 and using 5 bottles will get you to level 19. The more exciting drop from the chaos spawner is the chaotic hexahedron. This item can be used to craft the last new weapon in the labyrinth. By using 2 spawner blades, 2 sticks, and one chaotic hexahedron, 
you can craft one scepter of sealed chaos. When you right click on any surface of a block with a scepter, you can summon a new pet mob called the sealed chaos. The sealed chaos is a stationary mob similar to shulker and attacks nearby hostile mobs with the ghost bullets. Each bullet does 8 damage and shoots one bullet every second. The sealed chaos despawns after 30 seconds similar to whimper but can be immediately summoned back since the cooldown for the scepter ends at the same time as it despawns. In fact, you can retrieve the sealed chaos by right clicking it with the scepter to instantly reset the cooldown, letting you move the seal chaos anytime you want. Now, that's all the features that are in Labyrinth, but I'm not done yet. I still have to explain some of the new game mechanics that I have added to the mod. The first game mechanic that I've added is the boss reset mechanic. When there is no player within 40 block proximity of the chaos spawner, the boss will go back to the sealed state with fully restored health. This way, the player will get the opportunity to collect their lost items without getting interrupted though you'll have to fight the boss from the start. You will still have to use a skull of chaos for every attempt, but the item has tangibility, giving you 10 attempts before you have to craft another skull of chaos. Another mechanic that differs from the vanilla boss is the multiplayer scaling. To make the fight fair for the boss and make the multiplayer challenging, the boss will gain 50% more health per player that was present in the 40 block radius when the fight started. Mojang started adding multiplayer support with the trial spawners, so I think it is natural for the boss to adapt to multiplayer as well. Both the boss reset mechanic and multiplayer scaling can be controlled in the config, so if you don't like it, there's an option to turn it off. Now, some might say that this system can be exploited by having one player starting the boss fight in the active range of the scaling and all other players entering the range after the boss fight has been started. To solve this problem without changing the boss health mid-fight, I've decided to add a mechanic that rewards the player for interacting with the multiplayer scaling. When the boss is defeated, the boss will drop loot for every player that was present in the range of the scaling when the boss fight starts. Each set of drop loot will be visible and can only be picked up by the player that the loot belongs to. This mechanic can also be turned off in the config if you like grinding. There's a lot more things you can change about this mod through config and data pack and if you need help, you can ask questions in my discord server. The concept of this mod is to add new structure and boss every major update which will increase the percentage on the name of the mod by 1%. My goal is to reach 100% which is 100 dungeons and bosses which sounds crazy so please help my journey by hitting the like button on the video and consider consider subscribing since that will make YouTube recommend this video to more people. Lastly, thank you guys for watching and hope you enjoy exploring the labyrinth.